Okay, we are, we're going. Uh, so, um, so what, uh, what is your name or what, what do you want to be called on here? Or, uh, my name, Nathan, but everybody call me Nate. Nate? All right, cool, dude. Nate, what's, uh, what's your story? It, it looks, looks like you like rap. That's what it says on there. Yeah, I just started rapping, man, about three months ago. How's it going? It been actually better. They've been showing me love. I dropped my first single uh, about two weeks and a couple days ago. We up to thirteen point five, and I got a new single dropping out October the second. No way, man. Yeah, that's man. They've been showing me love. That's crazy, right? I know. Like when we had, I put the link in my bio on IG for the uh, for like the pre-save and shit. So it, we got like one forty-seven pre-save. I only got like six hundred followers. So I'm like. But 147, that's a good number for a pre-save. First day of drop, got 648 streams. I'm like, damn, but we're going to hit 4K on my first drop. Second day, <laughs> second day we did 2.3K, and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Dude, could you could you put on, like, type out, like, how we can find your stuff? Oh, yeah. I go by uh, growing up in the hood, I had a Glock. So they used to call me Young Glizzy, and then once I started playing, once I started playing ball, they started calling me Nate Diesel. So I just <laughs> Glizzy Nate. So I just went together. That's great. So, dude, what is your story like? What state are you from? I live in South Carolina now. What? Oh, I South Carolina. I live in Carolina? South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. That was that accent. I, moved, I was like, "What?" For a second. I moved out here five years ago. Oh, cool. Where'd you move from? I moved from Baton Rouge. Okay, from Louisiana. So you're from the yeah. south. You're you're from the south. Yeah. So, dude, what is like? Uh, so, are you like? Do you play? You say you play ball. Are you? Do you play football or is that basketball? I play football, basketball, and baseball. God, dude, and you rap. You're killing. I feel it, like I, I try to I try to do as much and be as great. Like be great and as much as I can, cause I feel like it increased like my possibilities for mass success. Yeah, absolutely. How how has that been going for you? Like, is is it? It sounds like it's been going great with the rap, but like with everything, is it hard? Yeah, especially now, like with this quarantine and stuff. Like between, I was just testing my boy the other day. Between if I ain't recording, uh, networking, uh, doing school work, I at practice, but it's like it's like I sleep, but it's like. My days be white to white. Like as soon as I get up, it's something until I decide to go to sleep. Wow. Yeah. So you keep you keep going, man. That's awesome. Oh yeah, you know? that's not crazy. So like, so what is life like in South Carolina, and and how do you think it's different from Louisiana? It is way like it is way different because like we moved out here when I was twelve. So I moved to America when I was three. I used I was born in Kingston, one for Jamaica, one for Haitian. So it's like when we, when we moved over here, I'm half white, and like a lot of people don't like think that because like I'm so dark. But that's just like the Haitian, then like my hair, that's just like from my ancestors or whatever. So it's like when we moved to when we moved from Baton Rouge, it was like we went from like went from eating ramen noodles three times a day. Now we our channel, we got three houses. So like we don't oh, make you guys are making money. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. So was that hard early on? Like, what what happened that things got so much better for you guys? It was, well, I had I had got in trouble because we I right, so it's a street in Baton Rouge is like real notorious. It's called Roosevelt Street, and I live three rows down. So like we came up out the gutter or whatever. When we came over here, we was already a foot down, being that we basically immigrants now nah. even though i uh my well my mama parents were from him from america but now we immigrants so it was we was already a foot down but it's like the little stuff i'm grateful for like in my old hood you couldn't even walk your dog down the road without without no without having like something to protect yourself i'm saying like that something to protect yourself or not i could I could go outside and stuff like that. Ain't got to watch my back or nothing like that. So it's pretty, it's pretty wow. fire. That's crazy. So like, 
I mean, with all the things now with like our culture and the Black Lives Matter movement and, and racism and all that, like, what are your thoughts of all of that stuff? Or and it like, it's with me, I feel like I'm in like a unique position because like I said, I don't have like, so I can see like even on how I'm treated, I get treated different if I'm with my cousins because they Jamaican and Creole, they got dreads. I get treated different if I'm with them than if I was to say be with my mama and her family. So like, is, your, if, is, your, is your mom white or is that, is that yeah. your okay. Yeah, my mama white. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So could you kind of talk about the differences like when you're hanging out with like your Jamaican and Creole friends, like how are you treated differently in that group versus how you're treated differently when you're with your mom's family? Like the best, like this done happened. It was on two back to back days and it was just like crazy. Me put an emphasis on and it was, it was like right before the Corona had started. Uh, me and my boys had went to the mall. It's just like big mall, like an hour from where I stay in Augusta, Georgia. In Augusta, like thirty minutes from Atlanta, so I know you know where Atlanta. Is. Right. So it's like, so it's like we went to the mall or whatever. We getting followed around by security. Every stuff we going in, people the people following us. But now the next that I went, my mom and them, we went shopping. Now every time we walk in, people, oh, you need help with this? You looking for something? We do whoop. And I'm just like, how will I walk? Why we changing now? Like. If you, I, I'd rather you judge me as a person than judge me on on my on my surroundings and the people I'm surrounded with and the color of skin. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like so, and and in, do you did you feel ever treated differently in Louisiana versus in South Carolina in terms of that? Stuff too? Yeah, because the first time I actually seen a police, like, I don't remember much because I moved over here when I was three, so I was young. But the first time I can remember having an encounter with a police, he shot my uncle. <gasps> no. So it was like. How old yeah, were you? So I was. Either I was six going on seven or I was already seven. Dude, is that, is that, it's, it's. From what I understand, is that a that's a normal thing, right? It's like, unfortunately. Yeah, but like I can't be. You know, when you know what your family doing or whatever, you can't like. I one of my friends just died. I can't be mad because he died. Because I I know what he's doing. I know the lifestyle they're living. So that come with it. But at the same time, you like, you angry because they're not like they no longer with you. Man, that's crazy, dude. You have such a an interesting story. Um, so, like, so with high school now and everything, um, are you almost graduated? Yeah, then my senior year, I transferred. I had transferred my sophomore year to go play at a. Uh, uh, it was a private school, but uh, this senior year, I transferred back to my uh, my hometown that I grew. I was from Twelve. I um, 17. I just turned 17 like two months ago. So like from 12 to 17, I transferred back to my home school to come play ball. Wow. So like, yeah. and so now like looking into the future, have you thought much about about that? Like, is it football that's on your mind? Is it sports? Is it something else? To me, like I always tell people this, they be like, but you good at football. And I feel like God gave me that talent so I could do stuff in other areas or whatever, because, like, I, I, I'm i a damn good football player. <laughs> Play quarter, quarterback, linebacker, start on both sides of the ball or whatever. So I feel like the stuff I do, people expect me not to do it. Like, it don't matter who you is. I don't care if you, like, rap music, rock music. You the emo girl or you the country girl or the country dude. But I'm going to treat you the same because you're a person at the end of the day. So, like, when you hear a uh, Star football player talking to the kid nobody talked to. Uh, hey, bro, you want to go get something to eat that nobody talked to? Then I feel like I try to like set an example for that. Mm. Mm. That's great. Do you think like, I mean, you're so, from such a, a a different spot than like so many other people in the world, right? Like, there's so many. I don't know. 
so many people just don't really have a, an idea of the kind of life that you're living. Do you have any information or things that you'd want to say to people out there that may not know about what life is like for you that is important for them to know? I feel like, especially like with the media now, I feel like whatever they want you to know, that what you're going to know. So I feel like it always like growing up, you always told, believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see, because only half of what you see, that's going to be your perspective. So like, you got to be real empathetic. That's not like, being empathetic, that's not like, oh, I feel so bad for him. No, you just got to put yourself in their shoes and be like, well, I can see why he did it. Or maybe you can't see why he did it. And that's just something that you got to grow to do or either he was in the wrong. At the end of the day, right is right and wrong is wrong. But you just got to like improve it, improve on being empathetic and keeping that eye open to others. I feel like you could become so much of a better human through that. Dude, you're so wise, man. That. Yeah, dude, you're cool. You're a cool guy, dude. You are. Um, right. So, so I I came up with like a bunch of random questions, um, but I only ask three. So, uh -huh. so pick three numbers between one and forty-five, and I'll ask you those random questions. I already got them. Fourteen, twelve, and twenty-one. <laughs> what are those numbers to you? What do those mean? Uh, I was 12. That was like then the early part of my career, like playing ball and stuff like that. So I was one number 12 since I started playing quarterback. That when I started winning 12 in basketball, baseball, football, like that. And I just recently started winning 14 this year. And that just like, it's a, uh, I don't know, to me, it's like, I was playing like 4L. That didn't mean a lot to me for life. Mm -hmm. Like, if, like, like my hood is KMF, so I'll KMF for L. Like you can take me out of the mill, but you can't take the mill out of me. So I feel like is it, that is it instilled instilled with me like the things I do now they're gonna be things I do for life. You feel me? And then twenty one. That's my uh that's my great grandma's uh, birthday, July twenty one, the twenty first. Dude, you are yeah, cool guy. The cool guy that loves his grandma. You can't get any better than that, dude. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Fourteen. What is your favorite memory? Uh, uh my favorite, my favorite. Let me see. That's a hard one. Right there. That's a deep one. These are deep questions. It'll probably be. Mm. I I feel like my favorite memory would be one of my friends. He uh he from uh now where he live at now? I can't remember where he live at. He moved. He used to stay in uh Pakistan, but he moved. And he uh he was talking to me about his religion and stuff like that. Cause I'm a, well, I'm big on God. Like you really don't. I really don't try to like force it on nobody, but if it come up, I ain't gonna stop myself from talking about it. And we we're just talking, and then it was like I just like fell in to like telling him my story, and, like what I went through and stuff like that. Kind, of, I know it's a high, higher power. Kind of been through situations where I know uh, is like he had to step in, or I wouldn't be him. You feel me? So like just talking, talking to him, and then like. Telling my story to him and then seeing him gain knowledge from that and just helping him understand where I came from. Like like I said, the piggyback on being uh uh empathetic. You got the I wasn't trying to force it on him, but he was putting himself in my shoes, I put myself in his shoes. I wasn't trying to say nothing to offend him, but I was just letting him know my standpoint. And then like really he came to like that's how he came to know who I call God. Oh, so for you, like, uh, what is your relationship with God, and and how, what, why is it that you have such a strong faith? Or 
word, cause I feel like it's, it done been a lot of situations in my life, like I said, like, well, I know, like, just being in certain situations where it's just, like, by the grace of God, like, stuff I've known I shouldn't have did, still went and did, and then somehow getting out of it, that I look back now that I'm mature, and I'll be like, that wasn't nothing with God, just, like, keeping me safe. Well, that yeah yeah keeping you yeah keeping you safe making sure that things work out for you cool all right number Word. 12 all right here we go number 12 what is your most embarrassing story uh. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the most embarrassing one but what's a good one no, I really, I'm trying to think. I'm not trying to be cliche, but nothing really like, nothing really like happening. But uh, I do remember this one time, something that always stuck with me. Uh, we was we was in elementary school, and we was, on, we was outside playing. And then somehow I had on some jeans. And like, this is so cliche, but it was just crazy helping me. And my jeans split like right down the seam on the butt. And then my mama and my dad was at work. So like I couldn't get no more pants. So I had to walk around all day with my pants split <laughs> down the middle. <laughs> How old were you when that happened? I was probably... I had already... Now, I ain't even moved yet, so I had to be like 10 or 11. It was like 5th, 4th grade. Man, I mean, whenever it's uh, whenever it's like middle school and that stuff happens, that's very embarrassing. You know, that's tough. Or that when you, that when, that when you, people start roasting and stuff then. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Okay, we got the last one. Last question here. Number 21. What is your biggest pet peeve? Do you know what that pet peeve? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll probably have to say being, being ignorant is my biggest pet peeve. Could you kind of, For like, sure. what, like, like, about what? Or in what way? Just about, just about anything. Because the definition of insane is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So in that sense, you, that that's you being ignorant, being ignorant, being stupid is okay. I don't know, and I'm doing. But being ignorant is you do know and you're still doing. So just any situation of like, I feel like. Just like on on Omigo, like I run into a bunch of white kids. Ooh, can I say the N word? Can I say the N word? Well, and that that means being ignorant. But for you to feel like you got to say it, to me that shows who who really the ignorant. Like you know better, but you still decide to try to do that. Like it's crazy. Do you 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 must get that a lot on here, right? On Omega with the N word and stuff. Yeah, I remember uh, one dude I ran into. He had like the uh, the Nazi flag in the back of him, and like like I said, I ain't really like okay if that's cause I know, I know if we seen each other in real life, you wouldn't do none of that. So why yeah. I'm a, why I'm a stress you on the internet? I don't know where you live. I don't know who you is. Hey, if that's how you feel, man, do you hope you find God here? Bless you, man. Yeah, that's a that's a very open and I think that's the way that we really try to get hatred out of here, you know, is like these people there's just so filled with hatred and they they feel like they need an outlet here, you know, or or out in the world and the more that you just kind of show yourself and are vulnerable and are kind to people, you know, and show that who you are and your openness, your godliness, really. Like, that's how that's how we eventually get rid of all of this hatred. I think, you know. 
or you know what I'm saying? Like I try to I try to inform people so they won't be either quote unquote definition wise or Webster stupid. And then even when like if you hear it enough, because none of none of this stuff, all this hatred is you born with it. You taught this. So I feel like if you hear it enough, I feel like what darn a lot of people saying it. Let me think about it. And I don't put I don't plant it that seed in your head. Can I you don't hear it from me, you don't hear it from this and that, this, that, and the third. You keep on hearing this. So you, darn, maybe I am wrong. And maybe if I if I change one person through like through my story or doing that, and I feel like well, I, I did something. I changed one person. I helped one person find a higher meaning than hating somebody for the color of their skin or their religion or their nationality. That's great, man. Well, I can't, I can't wait to see. You know, something big is gonna happen to you soon. You know, one of these days. I, I totally sense it, man. You're, you're such a, a, a bright light. You know. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, dude. And um, so before we get going, uh, do you have any kind of last piece of advice or last kind of thought that you'd like to leave the audience? I'm going to say this is something that I live my life by ever since they told me. Or oh, two things. Two things I live my life by. First of all, it, it's so cliche, but if you live by it, then you forever going to progress in life. If you shoot for the moon, you land among the stars. And I feel like you should set your goals high enough Well, even if you don't pass them goals, that you still go further in life. Don't downplay your you don't downplay your ability for improvement to feel gratitude. You need to extend that you need to stand those limits further because you might end up getting more profit from it than if you would have set it short and succeeded. Hmm. And then the second thing is your network is your net worth. And <laughs> In so many situations, it's not really about what you know or what you got or how you do stuff, but it's just simply on the fact of who you know. That's why I feel like being a good human, just the people, is so important because the same person that you kick while they down, you might you might be down sometime when they got to bring you some water and you might need their help. And then it was, why would I help you when I was down? You didn't help me. I am typing that down. <laughs> Equals net worth. That is great. I've never heard that before. That's great. Well, man. I yeah, dude. Well, they, this was this was a, a a pleasant surprise. It was really great. And um, I'm gonna be uploading this video right now, uh, so you'll be able to check it out. Make sure, to, make sure to subscribe so that you'll see it pop up. And um Word, I already did. Oh, you man. joined the notification squad, man. <laughs> Great. I joined the notification squad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you good luck with everything, okay? I'm gonna check out your uh your rap and uh there's no doubt in my mind that things will things will go well for you, dude. Well, I'm finna uh the first song it was really just like sticking my tongue to what it's like a mainstream rock song, but this second song I felt like it, it, it was a lot more effort and a lot more meaning to it. It's called Call Out. And my great grandma, that the one I was telling about her birthday, she uh she passed and it like it just came to my head. I was like, grandma was fussing with playing in the streets. And the song really stemmed from that. Because as a youngin, we was like we was literally like just playing in the streets, playing football, playing basketball. She said, Hey y'all, get out the streets, cars coming. And then like as you got older, when you started experimenting outside in the streets, then your grandma always doing, hey, y'all need to leave that alone. Get out the streets. Y'all could do better than that. So it really stands for that. So this uh, that dropped October the 2nd. Uh, uh, the new single is called Call Out. And I feel like that's is I like it, man. That one has a lot of heart to it, a lot of heart, a lot of substance. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, 
Cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> check it out. Yeah. All right. Take appreciate care, it, man. man. You stay up. Yeah, man. See you later. <laughs>